They call it the Lenovo Legion 9i, and here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now keep in mind, if you're curious about my full impressions of the build quality and usability of this laptop, I've done a full unboxing of the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro, which is basically the Ryzen doppelganger of this laptop. And if you're curious about all of that, I'll link that up at the end of this video so you can check out my full thoughts. But what we're gonna do is get into the i7 and RTX 3060 equipped version of the Legion, which is the 5i, and check out its performance and the surrounding details that might be unique to the 5i. First and foremost, we're gonna check out the screen to see if the color gamut range, brightness, and color accuracy is in line with the Legion 5 Pro. Now the next thing I want to take a look at is the webcam, and here's a quick sample of the webcam on the Legion 5i. Here's a quick sample of the webcam on the Legion 5i. So you can see it's got good color tone. It's a little grainy for that 720p, but overall it'll do the trick. And of course, last but not least, how's the audio experience? So here's a quick sample of the speakers, so you can see how the audio sounds on the Legion 5i. And this laptop weighs the same as the Legion 5 Pro. So the weight and thickness is coming up on the screen now. It's a, one of the more chunky gaming laptops. I think it's built very well, but if I were gonna personally pick a laptop, it's a little too gamer-esque for me. Some of you love this look and really don't care how your laptop looks. So you're like, eh, yeah, looks great, performs well. Not too concerned. For me, it's a little heavy. It's a little on the chunky side. Otherwise though, the performance really makes up for the way this thing looks, in my opinion. You might love the look of this thing. It's up to you. Now let's go ahead and get into the ports. On the left side panel, we have USB type C and our headphone jack. On the left side panel, we have USB type A and the manual cutoff switch for the webcam. On the back of the chassis is where we're gonna see most of the ports. We have three USB type A's and HDMI, power adapter, USB type C, and RJ45. Now let's get into the keyboard and the trackpad of the Lenovo Legion 5i. Some nice soft touch keys. They're a little bit of that kind of rounded beveled key. So basically like it starts at the edge, dips down and then comes back up. So your fingers really nestle nicely into the keys. It's got a nice quiet key press. And then of course the trackpad is a good size. It's not massive. It's not like, you know, the huge MacBook Pro trackpad on the new 16 inch model, but it's a great size for creative professionals, whether you're video editing, working in Photoshop, whatever it might be, 3D modeling, it's a good trackpad. And here's a quick audio sample of both the keyboard and the trackpad in use. Now the next thing I wanna take a look at is the battery life. And the battery life is pretty good on this laptop. It's not amazing, it doesn't blow your socks off, but there is quite a bit of control in the Lenovo Vantage Center. Some people have gotten even better battery life than the tests that I have seen. So if you've gotten better battery life than my results, post your battery life results in the comment section below. I'd love to see your results because some people really figure out like just the right tweaks to get just an extra 30 minutes or an hour of battery life. And so let me know if that is you and please comment below, bring some extra value to the community. I always love when you guys do that. Now, before we get into the performance benchmarks, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Legion 5i, and also maybe the Legion 5 Pro, I'll link them both below and you can check those out, the live pricing. And if you make a purchase with one of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, getting into the benchmarks, let's talk about the upgrade path really quickly. Okay, so you can upgrade both RAM sticks on this laptop and you have upgradable SSD slots, which is fantastic. So this laptop has great upgrade opportunities. Now this laptop does come with the i7 11800H and RTX 3050 graphics. I'm so sorry, in the beginning of the video, I just realized, I think I said RTX 3060. It's not correct, this is the RTX 3050. 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. You can get this laptop in a 3060, but the model I have is the 3050. Now let's head into Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core.
And as you can see, this laptop has no problems in the simulated benchmarks. It scores very well on the simulated benchmarks, not as good as some of the other laptops we've seen on the channel, but this laptop is more affordable than some of the laptops you're seeing on the chart compared with it right now. So it's a great budget-friendly option to still get great performance. Now, as we move on to Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo, as well as SolidWorks. This laptop, because it has the RTX 3050, which is a four gig VRAM card compared to the six gig VRAM card in the 3060, you're gonna see less performance in 3D modeling. Now, if you wanna get that more performance and you wanna get the i7, just go ahead and upgrade the GPU to that RTX 3060, and you'll get much better performance in 3D modeling and heavy graphics intensive programs. Now, moving on to After Effects, this laptop does struggle a little bit. And again, that's just because of the four gigs of VRAM. If you had that extra two gigs of VRAM, you'd be up in the mid 900s. But because we have that 3050 in here, we're seeing the high 800s, which is still a fantastic score for After Effects. Definitely gonna have no problems in After Effects with smooth working and some good rendering with the dedicated GPU. Moving on to video editing, you can see the laptop does good. It's a little slower than some of the other laptops, but because of the price point of this laptop, it does very well. As you see, red footage struggled quite a bit, but compared to something like the M1 Max, it's like $2,000 cheaper for this laptop. So price to performance, it packs a really good punch. Now, moving on to playback, you can see that the playback is great for 4K video editing, zero drop frames. B-RAW, it does really well, and then red footage struggles a little bit but that's most laptops on the channel right now. That red footage is so heavy. I'm trying to get better playback from these laptops for red footage, but they all continue to seem to struggle quite a bit. Now, one of my favorite tests is to look at the thermals, fan noise, and export time out of the laptop at the different fan modes in the command center. And those results are coming up on the screen right now. Heading over to DaVinci Resolve, this laptop gets good export times in 1080p and 4K. Not as good as some of the Ryzen laptops or maybe the new M1 chips from Apple, the M1 Pro and M1 Max, but it still gets good export times. Now the playback is something you won't really need to worry about. DaVinci Resolve is well optimized for these powerful gaming laptops for playback, and so you'll be in good hands there. Next, let's shift on over to Photoshop. As you can see in Photoshop, we're not having the best score in the world. It's one of the lower scores out of an i7 11800H. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the score because the HP Omen 17 with the i7 11800H scored a 947 compared to this 774, okay? Now, some of you are gonna make a great point and that's that the RAM sticks that they're using inside of these Legion laptops are not very high quality, okay? I tested this laptop at factory configuration. So if you upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs non-factory or 32 gigs non-factory, you're gonna see substantially better performance out of this laptop. So with 16 gigs of RAM non-factory, I'm saying we could easily be into the mid 800s with this laptop. At 32 gigs, I think we could be into the 900s with this laptop. So that's probably a big reason we're seeing such a low score inside of Photoshop is that bad, well not bad, those lower quality RAM sticks that they're putting into these laptops during this round of production. One of the reasons to pick Intel over Ryzen is gonna be cooler thermals. Not vastly cooler, but anywhere from five to 10 degrees cooler Celsius. And so it makes for a cooler laptop if you're choosing Intel. Um, though you might want to have Ryzen for a few more cores and threads, for more multitasking opportunities. Really the choice is yours. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.